Hi everyone, we're here at the War Training Center in Tomball, Texas, and we have the absolute privilege today of interviewing Santiago Guzman, who is an MMA fighter and also a coach here at the War Training Center. So Santiago, thank you. Thank you. Can you maybe right off the bat tell us a little bit about what you do here at War? Um, well, I've been here for I think a little over two years now. I uh, started just training. Um, Trevin Giles was a good friend of mine. I had asked him initially if I could come, and ever since then, uh, I've just been here. And then Jeremy, uh, the owner of the gym, uh, blessed me with an opportunity to coach, and I took it right away. So um, ever since then, I've just been training and coaching here, and uh, I love everything about it. What do you love about the coaching aspect here? Uh, the coaching is more uh, of the... I guess the point of view, you see it not as a fighter or a competitor, but as a coach. So I feel like it makes me think a lot more as far as um, what I tell people what to do. I'll make sure I'm detailed and be very repetitive as well, because I know for people that are just learning, <clears throat> repetition is a, is a big thing. Um, so that in and of itself is really humbling to me. And um, at the end of the day, I just, I just love doing it. What made you want to become a fighter in the first place? Um, really just boils down to just the pure uh, competition aspect of it. Uh, I did play some other sports, but I feel like fighting just resonated with me in a different way, uh, uh, more than any other sport for me. And I just fell in love with the, um, just the grind, the everyday thing when all my teammates are here. And if you ask me why I fight, I just, I just simply like just love it straight up. Um, so you posted something on your Instagram, which I thought was interesting, and I thought maybe we can dig into a little more. And you said, some people have no idea what we put ourselves through as fighters. Mm -hmm. Can you give people a visual or an idea about what exactly that means? I feel like a lot of people just see snippets of what fighters do and like the real hard, grindy stuff where you're just constantly either sparring or grappling at, you know, live speed. It's like you're pushed to just a certain limit every day or at least almost every single day. And that, that that's like probably the number one thing that I feel people don't see. And uh, I feel like sometimes fighters are underappreciated or, or they don't they don't get the, I guess the love, not the love that they deserve, but maybe just the love that they, not love, love and respect and just, knowing that um, we're putting into our craft just like any other anybody else like a soccer player or a football player um, but I do feel like the intensity of it is just very very different and you're taking a beating on your body right, right. like yeah. day in and day out how how many hours would you say a day that you put <clears throat> towards your cast put towards training every day I would say maybe an average of like four hours, five hours a day. Four or five hours take. a day. Yeah. Um, for me, it's being here, of course, and then just doing things on the side by myself, like running or lifting or swimming, any extra sort of thing I could do to make sure I'm better in the gym and in the cage. So you kind of dug into this a little, but I want to I wanna go just a little bit deeper in terms of getting people to really understand what would a day in a life what's your daily routine like like if you know if you just start from the moment that you wake up mm -hmm. not every detail but if you no, just kind of I mean, you know a yeah. couple of different steps in a nutshell my days are i mean pretty much the same for me uh, i wake up pretty early uh, walk my dog in the morning uh, drink like a black cup of coffee um, chill for a little bit and then it'll be time for me to head out to train do the morning training which is basically the fighter training um, it's like a two hour thing. Right after that, I either go run or I go lift for like an hour and then I gotta go to work right after that. And then I just won't be home till nighttime where I just get to like relax and be with my family. Well, my girlfriend, um, she's pregnant now and, and our three cats and one dog. <laughs> yeah. A big family already. Congratulations yeah, to you both. Thank you. Um, so now you're touching a little bit on family, which is perfect. I didn't give you the questions ahead of time, but it almost feels that way, the way <laughs> yeah. they're progressing. Uh, tell me a bit about where you're from. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like so many fighters have a backstory and you don't always get to hear it, right? Like you just see them in the ring. So tell me a little bit about, you know, where you're from, where you grew up and kind of what that was like for you. 
Uh, I grew up in Palmira, Colombia, a small town in Colombia. Uh, I grew up, I, got, I only lived there till I was seven years old, so uh, I didn't really get to live a childhood in my home country, but uh, thankfully I kept the Spanish. I didn't lose it, so that's good. And I got here when I was seven. Uh, my family pretty much had to start from scratch, you know. My mom had to go to school, my dad had to work. Uh, they both had jobs at a, <clears throat> at a pottery barn, I believe. That was her first job while she was going to school. And then, you know, the American dream thing, go to school, make some money, get a good jobs. And now, uh, thankfully, God has blessed us and my family has a job. Um, that's pretty much, I just went to school, graduated high school. And then uh, short after graduation is when I discovered MMA. So it sounds like you've gotten quite a few blessings in life. I know you were recently signed with Combate. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit more about that and what that means for an orga mm -hmm. organization like them to sign you? Yeah, Combate, um, they've been around for a while as far as I know, but I do feel like they're the UFC equivalent of um, Latin America. So it's a big deal to me. Um, definitely the most money I'll ever be making as far as just fighting. And... I feel like a win streak there is going to not only get me a title shot for that promotion, but then hopefully UFC or any of these big promotions notice me. And I think that's a good thought, too. What is the goal? What is the North Star, the thing that you are aiming to get to? Well, for me personally, um, and it's just for me, speaking for myself, and uh, this might be just the same approach everybody has when they're fight, who, who's a fighter. And to me, I just simply just want to be the best, um, not just a champion. Uh, I see myself with a number one pound for pound next to my name. And as crazy as it sounds, it rings true to me in my head every single day. But I think as far as I put in the work to make that happen, um, I'm just going to ride, ride it till the wheels fall off. Okay. Yeah. All right. And you, you have a ring name. The Scorpion King. Scorpion yeah. King, all right. What's the backstory on that? Why Scorpion it's King? It's pretty funny. Um, this was the first fight that um, I had with the gym. Actually, the second fight, but the first fight that I had with one of our coaches cornering me, and it was uh, Adam. So we went to, I believe it was Mississippi. Uh, I was fighting the guy. It was a good fight, back and forth. And this guy in the background was just yelling, Scorpion King. Or he was just yelling a bunch of stuff, but Scorpion King is the thing that resonated. So uh, they told me afterwards, my coaches, that the, they were, he was calling me that. And I just kind of decided on the spot just to keep it. I was just like, you know, good, you know, place, time, it happened. So why not? Because okay. I don't have a nickname in mind already. So uh, I'm glad that happened. It sold itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so speaking of fighting, when is your next fight? My next fight is June 18th on Sunday. Father's Day of all days, crazy, and it's going to be in Miami, Florida. So that's also fitting because you're becoming a father, you're <laughs> yeah. fighting on Father's Day, yeah. everything keeps, it's, I see a pattern here, everything yeah. falling in line for oh, you. Yeah. And what division will you be fighting in? It's a lightweight division, Light. uh, 155 pounds. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the division I've been fighting at for quite a while, and I feel like that's uh, it's a good division for me for now. Okay. Yeah. And what are you looking forward to most in terms of this upcoming fight? Uh, really just get the win and not only get the win, but get the win like in a very dominant, dominant fashion, uh, take as little damage as possible and get out of there early, but just make sure that, uh, I'm very entertaining and I just leave that wow factor for people to want to see me fight next time. And if they want to see you kind of in practice, you know, you teach kickboxing here at the war training center. So I thought about this, you know, there's so many places that you could go throughout Houston, you know, in the Houston area that you could go train mm -hmm. for boxing. If I was coming to take a class, why would I want to come and pick this gym and pick your class? Um, for people starting out, I feel is uh, first is getting out of that. Uh, comfort zone where to you have to be very close and personal with somebody and not only that but you're also learning how to defend yourself while also getting in shape you may or may not make some friends here but 99% of the time you do at least I feel like you do um, 
and really just uh, having fun because at the end of the day you're learning something that is going to get you in shape and you know in case things happen where you might have to use that you already know a little something so I feel like it's very it's only good things really that you get out of it music is always a big big motivator for me so this next question is very selfish uh, but in terms of music what is a favorite motivational song or lyric that you mm. really feel in your bones and hypes you up like no other um it would be an artist just because there's so many songs but it's eminem um i've been listening to him since i was a kid and it's just something about his lyrics or his songs that really just kind of get to me in a good way yeah. and uh, the one song that's always that i always at least play once a day is uh, legacy um it's him and another girl singing so it's kind of like a singing and rapping song and he just talks about you know uh, in that song leaving a legacy and uh, having doubters and you know having to not, not not only prove others wrong but prove yourself right which i think is more important you know proving yourself right and believing that you can do what you know you could do and uh that song pretty much just talks about that just leaving a legacy and i, I feel like when when i die uh, i just want to leave an impact you know for my children, my family, and, you know, people here at the gym, if God allows it. Okay, very fitting. That's a, <laughs> that's a great, great song. And I yeah. think maybe a, a good way to, to close out. And so I would say just the last thing, if people want to find out more about you and maybe even kind of see, you know, what a class might look like, uh, how do they find out more about you in terms of social media? Where can they catch you? Um, my social media, I only have Facebook and Instagram. Um, I'm working on a TikTok, but uh, that's in the early, early stages. So hopefully in the future, I can get something going with that just so people can see a little more about what I do. But my Instagram is um, the Scorpion King underscore war underscore MMA. And my Facebook is just Santiago Guzman. Those are my only two uh, social media. So if you guys, if anybody wants to hit me up there, they can. Um, I also provide privates if anybody wants a private training session. Uh, we can talk about, you know, what you want to learn or what you want to work on. Um, but, yeah. And sponsors. Sponsors, yes. Sponsors yeah. for these fights yeah. that you're doing that are televised globally. We want to be able to have people see that, right? Yeah, definitely. Sponsors are a, a huge deal for fighters just because um, a lot of the training that we're doing, you know, we're not exactly getting paid to train. We only get paid to fight, so uh, the training can get really, you know, really intense where there's recovery, your diet, uh, like transportation for me. I drive about an hour every day just to get here, so like a two-hour drive back and forth. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. I don't know if you have any, you know, parting words in a sense. You've got this fight coming up. If there's anything else that you just want to let the crowd know today, feel free. Yeah, um, I just want to let people know um, how important it is. Um, nothing to do with fighting, but more to do with getting in shape because I feel like getting in shape, especially in this day and age where, you know, there's so much obesity and, you know, little kids just being not healthy at all. I feel like health is just such an important thing because if you're healthy, if you have a healthy body, you have a healthy mind. Um, at least that's the way I look at it. And it may not always be like that, but if you're, if you worry about your health, I think that's very important. Yeah. Not, nothing to do with fighting, just health period. You know? Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. It's, it's a great, important message. So Santiago, thank you so much thank you. for taking the time today. And we look forward to seeing you secure that victory for on sure. 18th. June 18th. Oh, June 18th. Oh, June 18th. June 18th. Yeah. We're All right. a little over or a month already, maybe yeah. yeah, a little over a month. All right, get us that win. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you.